There was a study that came out two weeks ago, and it said that 85% of people don't know their purpose, that only 15% uh, did. And I'm not sad about that. That sounds about right. I just want to be among the 15%. When people discovered their purpose, uh, whatever they were doing improved 34%. Isn't that crazy? So it almost doubled because when you are on your purpose, so I would say if you're listening, figure out your purpose. I'm not saying give me a Sunday school answer. I'm saying give me a real answer. What is your purpose? New York Times bestselling author Bob Goff is my guest today on CIA, Contagious Influencers of America from the producers of Keep the Faith. I'm David Sams. Bob has been a friend for some time. We have him on the uh, radio show quite often. Everybody loves Bob. He, he's just one of those guys that when we put him on the air, people go, can I have more of Bob? You know, can I, can I have more of that kind of inspiration? Can we hear more stories and more wisdom and, and inspiration from Bob Goff? I just love when I have the opportunity to interview him because uh, he gives us so much material for the radio show that, I mean, literally we can take one interview and spread it out over a, a year or two and people just want more and more and more. And I love doing what we do here on the podcast. And that's letting you hear the interview in, in its entirety. You know, we don't get to do that on the radio show because we, we air on the music stations, but here on the podcast, you know, you get to hear how it really is when, when I do the interviews. So, uh, that's pretty cool. You know, Bob is, uh, he's, you know, he's, a he's a lawyer, a speaker, uh, you know, of course he's a best-selling author many times over, uh, you know, his big book was, uh, love does, but I, I hate that his big book. That's like saying, uh, Michael Jackson's big uh, thing was Thriller. Of course, we know that, but you know, bad didn't do too bad either, right? Um, it, <laughs> yeah, it's. I, I know people just say, "Do you really have to bring up the one that you know w it was just so out of this world that you can never quite top it again?" And and that, that, that's really kind of weird. It's like people always want to ask me my career highlights, and of course, they always go to. Uh, they always go to Oprah and they go to Wheel of Fortune and Jeopardy, but it's like, no, don't you remember? I did, uh, I did a show called uh, Roller Games too. Well, it's not exactly the same league as uh, those other shows I mentioned that I was involved with, but uh, you know, it, it, even today, you know, I'm, I'm working on something that I, I'm more excited about than I think anything I've ever done ever, and that's with uh, Jackie Dorman. Uh, Jackie Dorman, she's a matchmaker. Not that she's done anything for me in the matchmaking area, but she is a remarkable matchmaker for literally thousands of uh, folks, uh, especially women. You can check out why I'm so excited about this. Just go to lovestories.com and uh, you'll you'll see why I'm excited. I mean, it's 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 changing the world. She's changing the world and she's so inspiring. So I just love it when we have a chance to put these great inspiring people on uh, on the podcast and on the radio show and bob goff is definitely definitely a five-star general of inspiration so let's get right to my interview that i recently did with my friend bob goff well hello there how you been doing good yeah it's been a, a busy season here i'm up at the oaks uh, retreat center we got and we're in the middle of putting a vineyard in, which is really fun. I'm having a blast. I'm not a wine guy, but I'm definitely having some fun planting all the grapes. Well, you plant and I'll drink. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Yeah, we just need to figure out how to uh, ferment it. I don't think that'd be hard. A couple of YouTube videos, that's all that's separating us right hey, now. Hey, you know what? That's that's what turns you into an expert now, just doing YouTube video. <laughs> yeah, isn't that crazy? Well, thanks for letting me be on this. In any way it can be helpful, just count me in. I, I, I just uh, came in from a, uh, I'm, I'm trying to walk eight miles a day and I, I just came in. Oh from, my gosh. I got six miles of it done. Yeah. When, when the pandemic hit. Yeah. What'd you do? I, uh, I was going to go nuts. Then I set a goal of 1500 miles by December the 31st and I hit it on December 31st. I hit 1500 miles and I'd never walked before like that in my life. And it saved me last year. It, it was it was so amazing. And so this year, I decided to set a new goal. And I said, uh, uh, I, I thought, wow, what's uh, what's so unique about 2021? I went to my little uh, Google Maps and I typed in Nashville to the Pacific Ocean to the Santa Monica Pier, and it's exactly 2,021 miles. 
Oh, that's awesome. So, so you're making the trip. So I'm making the tw- trip uh, mentally, you know, and, and physically. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm walking the, the, the equivalent to Nashville to, to uh, Santa Monica, and uh, so, which means I got to do about 40 miles a week, which is not a big deal anymore because I, I'm, I'm, I've worked myself up to that. It's amazing how you can just, uh, you know, change your mind, change your attitude in about a month. I think that is so great. You're going full Forrest Gump. Do you know that guy? He went on his run, uh, and it was three years, two months, 14 days, and 16 hours. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? <laughs> so that's uh, set, set your clock. I don't know why I can remember that stuff. I'm a lawyer. I just memorize stuff. <laughs> but yeah. Well, I decided, you know, one thing I want to talk to you about is, uh, you know, kind of um, how to start over after a crisis. Because uh, we're all one way or the other start having to start over, whether it's uh, our daily routine, whether it's finding a new gig, uh, whether it's, uh, you know, uh, learning to, uh, you know, not be afraid to go to church anymore. Yeah. It's, we, have, we have a new starting point. So I wanted to talk to you about that a little bit and just get some pointers from you on, on starting over after a crisis. Yeah, bingo. What I want to do is uh, make sure I know where I am. That's a great way to start. Just know where you're at. Yeah. You go into a big mall. And yeah. The first thing you do when you get to the mall is there's a red X and it says you are here. Mm-hmm. And so figure out where you're at. That's the the first question that God asked Adam and Eve after it got kind of wonky in the garden. Mm-hmm. He said, where are you? <laughs> so that would be a great way to uh, lay your plans forward. And then I would uh, plan a uh, small increment at a time. So instead of you doing the whole walk from Nashville to the Pacific and back, um, you're just chunking it up. You figure it out about 40 miles a week. That means about seven miles for today. And um, I've sailed to cross the Pacific a couple times and you could put a uh, pin in Long Beach and another pin at Diamond Head and think of that as one 2,700 mile chunk, mm-hmm. but you can make about 200 miles in a day. Mm-hmm. And so I just may have set a waypoint about 200 miles from now, or you can think of the Israelites with manna, just like about a one day's worth. So this is the amount of uh, the direction I want to go this year. Um, this is how I'm going to chunk it up for today. And then I would just do what's adjacent to you. And I'll tell you what I mean. I bought, uh, in addition, everybody had a setback with the pandemic, but I bought an old Young Life camp. that had been used for 40 years and abused by junior high school boys. Uh, and it smelled like 40 years of junior high school boys. <laughs> I was in pretty rough <laughs> shape. And so we tore it down to the studs and rebuilt it right about the time we were going to open it up everything shuts down here in California. You're just like, we're out. There's tumbleweeds that are blowing through this place. Uh, But adjacent to it, there was a big field. And in the field uh, was an old barn. And next to the barn was a racetrack. And so I got the field. I got the barn. I got the racetrack. And I decided I'm just going to train racehorses. And now I'm a guy that doesn't know anything about racehorses. And that's rounding up. I just know zero. Um, but I thought I've got a track. I could just get uh, somebody who knows how to train them. And then we could evidently horses don't get COVID. So I'll train them. And while we are losing our shirt on the camp, we're making bank on these <laughs> race horses. Wow. I still don't know anything about horses. Wait, wait so, you're, so not, not, you're in the race horses and, and making wine now. I, I, I like this change. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's, they're, they're not my horses. I couldn't afford one. These are horses that's crazy. They're like syndicated. They have like 12 people own this thing. The last two flew over, get this, on a chartered cargo plane from France. I'm like, do I get them at luggage claim? <laughs> so these, I've told the people that are working there, if they break a leg, don't shoot it, shoot me. Uh, because I just, uh, it would be a day I couldn't afford. But my point for people that are trying to start again is find what's adjacent to you. There was a thing that you used to do <clears throat> but what you do isn't who you are. Like, so I've got a bunch of pieces of paper in a file cabinet somewhere that says I'm a lawyer in mm-hmm. 10 states. And, uh, but that isn't who I am. I'm a uh, sweet Maria Goff's husband. I'm Lindsay Richard and Adam's dad. Like that's, I'm a fun guy. Evidently, uh, there's some horses walking around eating grass, but that doesn't make me a cowboy. It just makes me a guy 
who saw what was adjacent to him and said, what if I do that while I'm figuring out something that was my main plan? Mm -hmm, So I think mm -hmm. that kind of flexibility for the people, whether faith guide your steps uh, or something else, I would just say what's adjacent to you, but I'd pick something adjacent to you that's going to last. Horses are fine. Uh, Jesus will last. <laughs> so, Good point. I'm not his PR guy, and I'm sure not his, uh, like, I'm sure not his lawyer. But I am uh, trying to say what's going to outlast me, and I'm going to do more of that. Mm. Good point. Good, good one. So, <laughs> you know, I'm sure that some at, at at some point throughout your life, you've been in a uh, rut. You've been stuck, and I know so many people have. Just, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're hearing us uh, talk about starting over and they're going, whoa, wait a minute. I, starting over? I, I, I'm in a hole I can't get unstuck. When, when you've been that deep, dark in a hole, what, what have you done to get out of it? Yeah, I was thinking about a phrase I put in a book one time. It was like the holes that we dig are the foundations God's building. <laughs> so I just think, so I'm in this hole and what a great opportunity to uh, make a change to say new day, new Bob, like who's this guy? So I'll give you an example in January of this year. um, I uh, uh, was able to make good on an ambition of mine, which is to not be on an airplane every day. So for the last decade, I've been uh, flying and speaking somewhere every day, seven days a week. I'm just always on a plane or always on my way back home. And so I, I get super lonely. So I always fly somewhere, even if it's Orlando from San Diego. And then I speak and I fly home to Maria. And the next morning I'll fly back to Nashville. And the next night I'll fly to Sweet Maria. And the next morning. So I've been doing that in the air thing. But because I'm a grandpa now, I just want to be like around. I want to be adjacent to the kids. Uh, I kind of missed my grandson's first step and I decided I would miss the second one. So in January, I quit. I called 72 events that I was scheduled for. And I said, I'm out. And I want the people listening to know that you want to be a person of your word. But at the same time, you can update people on where you're at. And I just decided I was going to let the party come to me. That's why I said, I'm getting a camp. Um, I'm just going to do it right here. And if anybody wants to hang out, I'll be a really easy guy to find. I decided that I wanted to be available. And one thing that people that are feel like they're stuck um, to say, what if I become just the most available person around? I'll give you an example. I'm never the smartest guy in the room, but I put my cell phone number in the back of two and a half million books and I don't send people to voicemail. So I get about a hundred calls a day and it's awesome. I can't get a thing done. Um, But that idea of being constantly interrupted, if faith guides your steps, Um, I just think about Jesus and he was available to everybody Uh, and he was the most important person ever. And I'm just a has been lawyer. So I think one of the things that became important to me to get out of this idea of uh, of being confused about who I am is I'm the guy that's Uber available. And that was even before there was Uber. (laughs) I just decided I'm that guy. So I think people uh, think the way to get out of the rut is to, move to Jordan. And that definitely would uh, be definitely a bold move. Um, A bolder move would be to move to Afghanistan. And, uh, but I would say, instead of measuring what you're doing against what somebody else is doing, uh, to just keep your eyes on your own paper and knowing that God never compares what he creates and uh, he's created you. And I'm not supposed to be like you and I'm not going to walk eight miles today. I promise you that. Um, (laughs) I won't even uh, run eight miles (laughs) chased by a big horse. It ain't happening. But I'm just delighting in you being you. I just think that's such a beautiful ambition. I love that. And the the way you connected it with something that matters or something that's tangible. I think that people that uh, bring their life and their faith together have their head on a swivel. They're just always trying to connect what's happening around them to things that matter more. Well, it's been fascinating to talk to folks, especially the last few weeks, folks that had faced, uh, you know, that uh, that uh, detour sign, the roadblock sign. And, you know, we all we all get frustrated when we when we face that sign. It's like, really, I, I got to drive 40 miles outside, you know, out of my uh, way just to get 
you know, two miles down the road. And that's kind of what this whole pandemic has been. It's like, really? We have to do this like this? And uh, But it's been really fascinating uh, on these stories I've been collecting of people who are basically reinventing themselves because of this whole situation. It's like it's like me. I, you know, at my age, I would never, I, I don't think I've walked a total of, uh, you know, 100 miles of my life. I mean, it's ridiculous, you know. And then all of a sudden, this thing hits. And out of need for human connection, because, you know, the first two weeks that this happened, I was basically in lockdown because I, somebody I, I know and uh, somebody that I was working with uh, got COVID-19 like in the first week, okay? And of course, of course, back in those days, we all thought we had leprosy if if we came in contact with somebody. And all I could think about is, you know, killing my, uh, you know, 80-year-old mom if I went to see her. So I decided I really had to get out and start walking around. And by golly, guess what? People started coming out of their homes and sitting on their for- front porches. I'd never seen that before. Yeah, that's kind of neat. And people were walking and their I- dogs. And I even saw a, a dad playing baseball in the street with some of the kids in the neighborhood. i have not seen people play baseball in the street in a cul-de-sac for probably 40 years. Yeah, maybe if you're uh, listening and you're married or uh, uh, maybe you've got a girlfriend, like don't have both. That'll be a different discussion. (laughs) Um, But what if you say, I'm going to come up with three by five cards. I'm going to write on those three by five cards questions that I have about the people I love. And I'm going to aim to have 10,000 questions. I'm putting them in a shoebox. And uh, I'll tell you, when you are dead and gone and people are saying nice things about you, they're going to get that shoebox out and they'll say, you know what he did? You know what she did? She came up with 10,000 questions, three or four at a time. So I would say 10,000 right now would be a lot of questions, but two or three questions. When was the last time you cried? When was you, when was the time you were embarrassed? How come? Like I ask questions like that. Boy, this is a time where people slow down and we can, comes out of Philippians 2.20. It's Paul talking about Timothy. He says, there's nobody like that guy. He takes a genuine interest in people. So come to, come up with 10,000 questions for your the people you love. Uh, they won't wonder if you're taking a genuine interest in them. During this, uh, this daily walk I take, the one thing I've done is I have called people, called friends that I, that I have not spoken to in years. Because, you know, when you're out there and you're a mile, two, three, four, five miles from your house and you have to walk back, um, you know, it it gives you a lot of time. And, yeah, you can listen to music. Yeah, you can listen to podcasts. But it's amazing when you call people up and you have a conversation. And I would never have done that sitting in my house staring at a wall. You know, I just didn't. My whole mindset just changed. Yeah. Well, what if you decide uh, that what you want to do is you're going to be the one uh, that's initiate something, maybe even with somebody who's been a little bit difficult in your life. Uh, And uh, it's easy to love nice people. I mean, you're one of them. You're just like low-hanging fruit. I'm a pretty nice guy too. Don't measure it by getting along with me because I'm an easy guy to get along with. But find the difficult people in your life. And the crazy thing is you're one of them. (laughs) Like whoever you are that's listening, this is an intervention. Like you're one of it. You're actually kind of difficult. And uh, and so can we uh, not ignore those things, but to work on those things. And I recognize I'm a super uh, impatient. I don't know about you or you. Can you resonate with that? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, absolutely. I'm, I'm, I make coffee nervous. I'm just like, ah. <laughs> and so what I try to do is I realize I'm just driving my people around me nuts. And so I'm just trying to just chill out a little bit. And if you're uh, impatient, like, I don't know, get a puppy. There you go. <laughs> You'll be so busy <laughs> house breaking that thing, you won't have time to drive everybody nuts. <laughs> what I'm trying to do is come up with strategies. And my worldview is that I just love being surprised. Don't you? Oh, yeah. Isn't it fun? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. So what if, uh, whether faith is important to you or not, you just see this idea that like the world wants to surprise you. Oh, I've got one. I bought the ranch, I bought the barn, I got the horse track. 
And a lady said, do you want a horse? I'm like, well, of course. <laughs> and I don't know anything about him. Uh, you know, the one I had before was fiberglass. I put a nickel in it in front of the grocery store. Um, <laughs> so she dropped off this brown horse with a black tail. And, uh, and now it's time to breed these horses. Evidently, uh, January and February are the time that it happens so that they pop out. And she said this happened to actually be a racehorse. So I uh, did a check on the lineage. Get this. This is a secretariat's great, great granddaughter. No. Is that crazy? No. I, I am not kidding you. This is like royalty. And I called this elderly woman. I said, like, I don't want to be the one that like took her horse. And she said, I said, like, I could bring the horse back. You realize this is like secretariat's great, great granddaughter. And you know what she said? I just wanted to surprise you. I'm like, well, honey, check that box. Um, wow. One of the things that uh, I think I want to do during this time is live in constant anticipation. And I think that'll get us through difficult times. To your point about how do you make a change, live in anticipation. I don't mean just like ladybugs landing on your nose anticipation. I just mean anticipating that beautiful things will happen to you. And my head needs to be on a swivel to be able to respond to them and to see them when they're happening. I like that. Constant anticipation. You know, for, for a while, I was living in constant constipation, so I think that that's... <laughs> <laughs> you need a little bit more fiber in your diet. Uh, one of the things that will get you in anticipation is some stuff that will be a long haul. I got on a list 30 years ago. I am 62 years old. 30 years ago, I got a, on a list for a slip at the Olawai Marina in uh, Hawaii. It's in Waikiki. It's a hundred slips. It costs 200 bucks a month to keep a boat there and the parking's free. Is that cool That's or what? so cool. Well, it took 30 years uh -huh. and three weeks ago, I got the registered letter from them that said, you're in. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so in two weeks, I, I got a catamaran and I'm just going to uh, bring it over there. I, whether I'm on it or I hire somebody, doesn't matter. But that is saying, I'm going to take whatever amount of time it takes so I can show up for the, the opportunities that come my way. And some of them are going to be opportunities with a really short fuse. And some of them are going to have a fuse that's 30 years long. Um, a great way to kind of measure where you're at in this adventure, too, is double your age and see if you're still around. So if I was 30 and I doubled it, like I, I'm 62 in February. So evidently, I, I was. Uh, I'm 62. If I double that, I'm in a jar. <laughs> so I'm just thinking, okay, so what are you going to do with the time that you have left? And I'm being like super intentional. Uh, I'm saying, what is it that's going to outlast me? What are the things that really matter? If faith is your thing, that's fine. If rugby is your thing, that's fine too. But, but what I want to say is what's going to outlast you? And I would put a lot of faith in something that put a lot of faith in me. Um, and that would be a really great way so that you aren't just chasing your tail. You're becoming quite dangerous staying at home between the, uh, the horse racing and the winemaking and the, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you, you have a whole laundry list of things you're getting into. Oh, I'll be so bummed. I'll be happy for all of the sadness to go away. But as a seven, this is like bone crushing on the Enneagram. Uh, but a, uh, but this idea of having the old, uh, all the rules go away. Like it's like earth through the sock drawer on the floor in March. And, uh, so I'm like, just trying to see what new socks match new other socks that I have. I don't want to go with just white ankle socks anymore. I'm just saying like, I don't know, let's try out the Argyles. Mm -hmm. <laughs> see what those things look like. <laughs> Pretty lame with shorts, but, but I think if you could just say, okay, so at a time where it seemed like nothing matched in your life, I think it's time to sit down with the doc sock drawer and say, what does match? What actually goes with the new creation that I am today? So for people listening right now and they go, wow, I got to have some of this. What, whatever this guy's taking, whatever he's drinking, whatever he's uh, praying about and, and receiving, I, I, just need, I just need some of that. And I need to go to his camp. Tell me about the camp. Tell me, I, obviously, you're not doing anything right now. Well, maybe you are. But um, uh, uh, what, what are your plans for the camp? And how, how can we show oh, up and hang out? 
Yeah. Well, for the next thing I'm doing right now on Thursday, I'm going to go look at the ranch next door. And that's a great way to think whatever your ranch next door is, that'd be say what's adjacent. Get this. This ranch has 25 buffaloes and they come with a ranch. I'm like, dude. Oh, my gosh. Now you're in the buffaloes. I mean, we, you know how buffaloes? much ground we've covered in the last 25 minutes? I think you have a whole zoo. and <laughs> Head on a swivel. Yeah, like non-creepy Michael Jackson. Like, So one of the things that I want to do is keep my head on a swivel. And if buffalo dude next door says no, I'm not going to be bummed. I'm like, why would he say yes? Uh, but if it does come together, I'm like, awesome. What's next? Um, but we aren't the things that we do. Um, e even if you make a mistake, I mean, this whole idea of giving yourself a little grace and receiving a little bit of grace. So my hope for this camp, it's called the Oaks. And my hope is that people can come here and just get better at whatever they need to get better at. Like they're, they need to get better at their marriage or just kind of get your ish together. Like what, and we have counselors, if you want one of those, and we got a pool if we want one of those. Now, there's miles and miles of hiking trails, and there's uh, a whole bunch of race horses. <laughs> but we've also got a couple trail horses. And um, so I just hope it's a place where people can just reset, catch their breath, and then make it be whatever they want it to be. There'll be plenty of things. I'll be sitting under the oak tree. Somebody wants to talk. But um, I think we can. we don't have to come to the Oaks to experience that. You can go to Starbucks and experience that. Bring a friend put three cards together, say, these are my first three of 10,000 questions I have for you and, uh, and have a authentic conversation where you can just say authentically, this is maybe I get really, really lonely, like achy lonely. I'm feeling really isolated during this time. I feel like I'm a great friend to people, but they're not great friends to me. I don't know what to do with that. Like, that would be the level of candor and authenticity that will, uh, allow you to see where in the mall you are, uh, put an X on it, and then find your way forward. Because if you don't know, I don't know if you've ever gone to the mall and forgot why you came. Um, like that, more, more so, more sell. so every day. You know, it's uh, yeah. That's that's why they sell Dippin' Dots. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, exactly. <laughs> Nobody goes to the mall to get them. It's just like <laughs> they, they're not good for you, and they cost more than drugs. But, but one of the things that I think we need to do is remember why we came. Uh, there was a study that came out two weeks ago, and it said that 85% of people don't know their purpose, that only 15% uh, did. And I'm not sad about that. That sounds about right. I just want to be among the 15%. <clears throat> An interesting subpart to the study, when people discovered their purpose, uh, whatever they were doing, improved 34%. Isn't that crazy? Oh, that is so crazy. Almost yeah. doubled. Yeah, because when you are on your purpose, so I would say if you're listening, figure out your purpose. I'm not saying give me a Sunday school answer. I'm saying give me a real answer. What is your purpose? Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. you might have several. That's awesome. That's why you're at the mall. Uh, and then don't just walk around eating the Dippin' Dots. Uh, go do what you do. I want to create safe places where people can keep it really real. <clears throat> That's not a slogan. It's not a mission statement. That's just Tuesday. Dippin' Dots, where you connect the dots at the mall, you know. Hey, yeah, I, I, bingo. I, I, I just wanted to just give you a, a heads up that if the, the guy with the buffalo next door, if that doesn't work out, I hear on the other side of it, your uh, your campgrounds, you've got a, a llama farm. Yeah. So. <laughs> That's yet to come. That would be great. I want to saddle one of those. I see you more ostriches. with llamas. I see you more surrounded yeah. by llamas, not buffalo. <laughs> yeah, only the Dalai Lama. Uh, but, but what I'd want to do is find the joy in this, and not just yippy skippy, silly kind of joy. Um, but to there's a lot uh, to be discouraged about, but there's more to be hopeful for. And so uh, I want to be aware of both ends. I want to know the things that are making me emote the way that I'm emoting. Whether you're feeling stressed out or sad, you've lost a loved one. <clears throat> you've lost your business. Um, but I also want to find the hope um, because faith is a big deal for me and recognize it isn't for everybody. There was a definition. Faith is confidence in what you're hoping for and assurance in what you haven't seen yet. And I would say like, that's a great definition. Like, what are you hoping for? Um, my boys, I, you know, when they were in high school, I just wanted them to graduate. 
what I hadn't seen yet was homework. <laughs> and I feel like I bet it's going to go. Uh, evidently, for four years of high school, it never got assigned. So they say. Yeah. So yeah. What I want to do is just be confident in what I'm hoping for. If you're looking for opportunities, your head is on a swivel. And it isn't just opportunities like monetary. You don't need to monetize everything, but an opportunity to grow, to grow into a more authentic version of me, as fallible as Bob Goff is, just a more authentic Bob Goff. Well, Bob, this has been great. And listen, just just give me the web address, especially where we can find out more at some point about your camp. Oh, yeah. If you just uh, bobgoff.com, I bet there's links in there to every kind of mischief I'm into. Okay. That sounds good, my friend. Hey, I really appreciate <laughs> you. A million. I really appreciate you, and we absolutely wanted to, to have you on here to help uh, kick off the year, and, and we love oh. you, and keep, keep up the good work and keep the faith, my friend, okay? Come on, you guys. I'm proud of you. Thanks for leading with love, and if you're listening, this year is your year, and not blowing sunshine at you. It's just an awareness that I'm going to seize the opportunities right in front of me. Good for you. Great talking to you. Thank you, my friend. We'll talk okay. again soon, okay? You and Give me a shout-out so well. when you get to uh, Nashville. Come on. Okay. All right. So long. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye-bye. And thank you, Bob. Thank you for sharing that that great time with me. I had so much fun. That was that was uh, you know, it's it's such such a pleasure to spend some time with him and uh, he always lights up my day and and gives me all kinds of uh, in, inspiring thoughts and that that I can share right here with you. Speaking of inspiring, we have something really inspiring coming up at the end of July, and it's something that we have never done before. You know, we've never done a live event like this. It's, it's not only new for us, but it's, it's it's new for Nashville, new to Music City. And I'm bringing this up, and I know a lot of you live all over around the world, all around the country. And you're like, why is he talking about a music festival in Nashville? Well, first of all, everybody wants to come to Nashville. I mean, Nashville is the the it place. You know, it's 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 what L.A. used to be, what New York used to be, what Miami used to be. Uh, but Nashville's now the it place. And um, so we've decided to team up with uh, uh, some uh, good friends um, who have done this before in Wisconsin quite successfully. They, they do it every year, as a matter of fact. It's called a Life Fest. And we've decided to team up with them and uh, help put on this big event at the end of July. And uh, it's going to be, uh, what, the 29th through the 31st of July. And boy, this is going to be a festival with thousands of people attending, including camping, um, including all kinds of fun family events, including a big stage with major headliners. And I'm talking about headliners like Skillet and Matthew West and, and, uh, Mandisa and Newsboys and Danny Gokey and, uh, Colton Dixon. And, uh, you know, the list goes on and on. You, you can get the full list by going to keep, keepthefaith.com but when was the last time you were actually had an outdoor festival? I mean, two years? What, by the time this thing rolls around? I mean, that's that's crazy. Two years of your life. So please do come to Nashville, Tennessee for a Life Fest Music City at the very end of July. More information is available at keepthefaith.com. Just hit the Life Fest button. I'm David Sams, and this has been CIA, Contagious Influences of America, the podcast. From the producers of Keep the Faith... Hey, remember to go out there and live that life in living color because it sure is a heck of a lot more interesting than living in black and white. We'll see you next time.